Hello and welcome back to another Python in Excel video. This time I'm going to talk about the Python editor. Okay, so I've got here a workbook from a previous video. I've got some Python cells on three different sheets and we're gonna use the editor to inspect them, to navigate around them and to correct some errors. We need to open the Python editor. You can find that on the formulas tab of the ribbon. In the Python button group, there's this editor button. If you're a fan of shortcuts, you can use Alt M Y E to open the editor. You can see there is this drop down at the top of the Python editor, and by default, it has selected all sheets and all Python cells. We're gonna step through some of these different combinations and see how we can use the editor to make things a bit easier. So let's leave that on all sheets and change it to Python errors only. Okay, in this workbook, I have three Python cells with errors. For any Python cell in the Python editor, there is a button in the top left representation of that cell. If you hit that button, it will take you to that cell. So if I hit here, it takes me to that cell M2. Now the error in this cell is simply NA. It's a bit cryptic. The reason for this error is because in any Python cell, the last line is the output of that cell. In this example, the last line is this stats models ordinary least square fit method, which creates a regression results wrapper object. If we have the cell set to Excel value and there is no way of representing that object, it will simply return an NA error. So the fix for this cell is simply to change it to Python object, hit save or press control enter, and it disappears from the list of error cells because it no longer has an error in it. You can see in cell M2, it says regression results wrapper. Let's go to the next error. I can just hit this and it will take me to the using Python class sheet, cell A17. There's an error here that says Python. It is analysis tool pack regress object has no attribute get statistic table. Now I know the fix for this because I made the error on purpose. I just put an S in here to give it the correct name and hit save and it disappears from the list of errors. And you can see that the dynamic array has populated. The last error is on cell B2 of the sheet next. So let's go there. Now this is an error because I've just typed Excel open close paren and not given any arguments to the Excel method. I actually don't want a Python cell here. So the way to deal with this is I'm just gonna delete the function call, press control enter to execute the cell, which gets rid of the Python error. If I go now to current sheet, all Python cells, you can see that there is actually still a Python cell there. To get rid of it, I just go to the cell itself and press the delete key on the keyboard and it removes that cell. Currently, I'm still on the next sheet and I have selected all sheets and all Python cells. And you can see that I have got several cells here and they're spread across two different sheets. Note that there are the names of the sheets separating the cells. So comparison and use Python class. If I hit this arrow, I can collapse the cells for that sheet. And if I hit both of them, I can see very quickly that I've got Python cells in the comparison sheet and in the use Python class sheet. So I want to go to the use Python class sheet and I want to go to cell A1. So I'm gonna hit A1. Right now, I'm still selected all Python cells, but I exclusively want to work on the cells in this sheet. So I'm going to change this to current sheet what that has done is it has gotten rid of the sheet name. So that's a little bit of extra space. I can still see all five Python cells on this sheet, but I only want to work on the cell A1. So I can change the filter again to selected Python cells. Now I'm only looking at the selected cell, which is A1. If I were to select A3, you can see that it changes and it changes. And if I want to view three at a time, I can select across those three and it will show me those three function calls. But I just want cell A1 because I want to work on this class. Now, when you have a lot, a lot of code like this, you may want to find some space to work in. So what I tend to do is make this as wide as it can go, which is half the width of the screen. I also hit this expand editor, which removes the filter. And the other thing I do is go to full screen mode. So that gives me as much vertical space as possible in the Python editor. If you happen to be lucky enough to have a vertical screen, then you can of course detach the editor and move it over to the vertical screen and make it as big as you want. So I make some edits, I finish my edits, and to get back to where I was before, I'm going to want to put the ribbon back so that I can see what I'm doing, 
hit the shrink editor, and then perhaps go back to the select Python cells, where I can then select the cells that I want to edit three at a time or as many at a time as I want. As a last little bit of knowledge about the Python editor, I just want to talk about the difference between spilled values and object output. So here I have selected the three cells with these three function calls and each of them has spilled values. And in fact, you can see a truncated representation of what has been spilled to the sheet. So in this case, it's this table in cell A5 and then the table in A12 and the table in A17. Those are truncated, so it doesn't show you everything, but it does show you a quick representation of what you can see in the sheet. If you were to change these to Python object, and rerun the cell. You can see now that the cell contains data frame. In the Python editor, the output is data frame. Now, if I expand that, I can see a preview of the data frame. Now, it just so happens that because this data frame is so small, spilled array preview is the same size as the data frame preview. But in this example, let me change this to Python object and rerun the cell. Now I can see data frame, but in this example, I can see all of the data frame, whereas when it was a spilled array, I only saw a truncated version of the spilled array. So unless you actually need to see the spilled data on the sheet, I, you may find that it's better to have it set to Python object. You can still see the data that's in the cell, but you don't actually have to take up a lot of sheet space in order to uh, create new cells. So in this case, I can move these up here and I can move this up here and I can change this to Python object. And now I can see everything that I need to see in the Python editor. That is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.